In this tutorial, I want to show some finer details about what exactly the detection head is predicting for the bounding boxes. I am also assuming that you have gone over the previous tutorials in this series. This video will make more sense if you have done so. Here I am using the high level feature map of size 13 by 13, but all that I will explain will apply to other feature maps extracted from the backbone. In the current grid that I am showing here, there is a ground truth box for a pixel where the orange dot is. Let me zoom on it. In the previous tutorials, I had also introduced the notion of anchor boxes. For this cell where the orange dot is shown, the anchor boxes are shown in blue color. Here I have three anchor boxes, but if you recall, it's up to you to consider any number of anchor boxes for your grid cell. It's, it depends on the setup of your neural network. There are three anchor boxes, but we are interested in only choosing one. And in order to do so, we need to select the most relevant anchor boxes. And this is where intersection over union, which is a metric that quantifies the similarity between the two bounding boxes, comes and play its role. Let's say that this is the anchor box for which we got the highest intersection over union. And hence, this is the one that is associated with our ground truth box. So we have a ground truth box for a grid cell. We have the corresponding anchor box. And this is the point. The question we need to ask is what exactly are we predicting? And one simple and straightforward way to think about is to maybe perhaps predict the delta or offsets that we would add to the anchor box coordinates. You can see the coordinates blinking. So you make your network predict the offsets that you will add such that the anchor box will end up aligning to your ground truth box. But there are certain issues with this seemingly simple formulation of our objective. And this is what was discussed in YOLO version 2 paper. The paper goes by the title YOLO 9000, but for all practical purposes, we call it YOLO V2. In this paper, they argued that, that directly predicting the offsets for anchor boxes lead to model instability, especially in early training iterations. Please note that this does not mean that the formulation is invalid. It's just that either it will take long time for the network to converge and or you need to employ some extra training tricks and strategies for it to converge. The authors rightly argued that predicting the offsets for anchor boxes is an unconstrained formulation. Unconstrained here means that the offsets that you will predict will take any value in the feature space and this will result in the coordinates of anchor boxes all over the place in various iterations, various training iterations that you will go through. Let me read the sentence as it is very clearly stated in this paper. This formulation is unconstrained. So any anchor box can end up at any point in the image, regardless of what location predicted the box. With random initialization, the model takes a long time to stabilize to predict sensible offsets. You can see that they are also saying that, that uh, it, it will take a little bit longer. It, the formulation is not invalid as such. And finally, they suggest a remedy. The solution they suggest is that instead of predicting the offsets, which could take your anchor box anywhere, and hence it is called an unconstrained, at least within this feature space, it is unconstrained. Why not predict the location coordinates relative to the location of the grid cell? Now this statement could be a bit cryptic. So let me explain it with the help of some visuals that might clarify the intention here. And for that, we will first zoom out of this uh, grid and we will see the entire feature map again. This is a high level feature map of size 13 by 13. Each cell that you see in this grid is one by one. Area is one, which means that that the grid cell with the orange dot is five units on the x-axis and four units on the y-axis. The starting coordinates are always top left of the feature map. You can see it like this as well. 
In other words, for a given grid cell, we know at least the x and y units from the top left corner. We have this information already. Let's bring the zoomed out version of the grid again. The x unit to the grid cell in the quotient is indicated using Cx and y unit to the grid cell is indicated using Cy. In our example, you can calculate Cx will be 5 and Cy will be 4. Just count the number of cells that you see. Now, what YOLO V2 paper is saying is that we predict the offset within our grid cell for both X and Y units. Those are shown using the blue lines that I have shown. The paper labels them as TX and TY. This means that the final center for our bounding box coordinates will be BX equals CX plus TX by equals cy plus ty simple mathematics at this point of time but there is an issue here you see the network is still going to predict the real number for tx and ty and it could be anything it's not going to be between 0 and 1 and you want that because you are predicting something within the grid cell and you know that the size of the grid cell is 1 by 1 so tx should be or must be between 0 and 1 and tx ty should must be also between 0 and 1 I should not say should it is must and this is not how neural network is going to behave because the number that it, it is going to predict for tx and ty is going to be a real number it could be negative it could be any number really and this is where what we will do is that we will take this tx and ty and we will pass it pass them through sigmoid function now sigmoid function uh, i'm assuming you know it uh, it's uh, it's one of the most widely used function within deep learning within the context of neural networks is that it takes a real number and squishes it between 0 and 1 and this is what is also shown in the yolo v2 paper by doing these kind of tricks, we manage to predict the center of the bounding box coordinates uh, by only predicting the, the relative coordinates within the grid cell. Now, so far, I have only talked about the two predictions, the Tx and Ty, and after doing some calculation, Bx and By, but I have not talked about the width and the height predictions. These are the equations that are mentioned in the YOLO V2 paper as well. And what they are saying is that first and foremost, we should make the width and height positive. How do you make something positive? Either you square those things that that can make things positive or you can also pass them to an exponential function. Which one is better? Is squaring a better way thing to do or exponential is better way to do things? Uh, there, is, there, there are some evidences which are now showing that squaring is better. I will talk about it in some later tutorial, but at least this is the this is a formulation that was there in the YOLO V2 paper, where they are exponentiating the TW and TH, the two real numbers, which could be negative, uh, that are predicted by your neural network. And finally, you multiply them with the height and the width of the anchor boxes. And this would help you predict things relative to the anchor box width and height. And you would end up either upscaling the original anchor box or downscaling the anchor box width and height. This, this scaling, downscaling, upscaling is happening when you are doing the training. And I have not talked about anything related to the training, how you set up the training, how you set up the loss function in order to make these kind of predictions and or to make the neural network learn. I will do that in some follow-up tutorials. By the way, in this paragraph, there is also a mentioning of a fifth coordinate, which is called TO. The paper is calling a fifth coordinate. I don't like this. this the, I don't like to call it a coordinate. It is one extra information about the objectness of the box. And uh, we will again talk about this in some other tutorial because it is not bounding box coordinate. The coordinates are TX, TY, TW, TH. I hope this helped you see what exactly is being predicted. And of course, there are variants of this formulation, but even in the newer variants, the basic idea remains 
very same or similar and with that i end this tutorial i wish you good luck with your learning and see you in another tutorial bye bye